Executive Director Lead Network Chukuma Okenwa joins us now for the breakdown of the 2023 budget. Mr. Okenwa, if we have time, we'll also look at the parameters, some of the parameters of the spending plan for next year's budget. Let's begin with education, which has got 2.05 trillion naira, out of which 300 billion naira is for university revitalization and 170 billion naira for upward adjustments of university lecturer salaries. Are you impressed and how much impact do you see this have uh, on the quality of education and, of course, the lingering asset strike? Well, uh, I would say that uh, that's like an improvement uh, from where we find ourselves, but still not good enough. 10% uh, uh, into a critical uh, sector like education is ridiculously very poor. Uh, considering that even at the moment, like something that it's not economic, uh, like the fuel subsidies, like when you look at the amount that is earmarked for fuel subsidies at 6.7 trillion, it is twice the value of health and education together. I mean, this basically has to do with the, the welfare of the citizens, catering for the mental development, as well as the social and you know, uh, physical development. Uh, but then the government counted uh, maybe like a, 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 a kind of a subsidy which is controversial and no longer sustainable because I think one of the things Nigeria would have done all this while is to actually fix our refining capacity. If we've actually been able to like get the capacity to refine all our oil, there won't be that contention whether we have to like subsidize petrol and all the rest of it because it's not economic to keep subsidizing what we even have the capacity to refine. It's not as if to say we don't have oil as a nation. So when you have a nation that have oil and it can refine its own oil, then what will you now talk about nations that don't have those resources? Interestingly, in some of the nations where we actually move the crude to be refined and we buy it at the refined cost, these are nations that don't even have oil. I mean, Nigeria is one of the top six oil producers. And then it's also a concern like every time to note that you know, just like in the last budget, we had like uh, uh, the, the deficit was about 6.2 trillion, 25 trillion. At the moment, it's uh, over 10 trillion, more than half of the budget. And for the minister to say, well, it's still within the threshold, I do not agree because in economics, we must have to match records with reality. You want to compare yourself with developed economies. Are you able to generate the amount of, you know, wealth that they have in terms of their revenue? In terms of even servicing, at the moment, despite maybe like uh, some claims by the minister, it is very clear that at the moment, it appeared that our, uh, you know, uh, our debt servicing uh, capacity, it's now lesser than the revenue. So how do, how do you call that sustainable? And then when you also judge about other factors, one of the areas that I think Nigerians also need to interrogate further is in the aspect of the National Assembly. Why can't the people's representatives come to a point of saying that at the moment, constant increase in this money that is not even accountable because for year to year, the National Assembly has refused to give us a breakdown of what these monies are meant for. I mean, it, it is really quite much considering what the economy is at, at the particular point. And then looking at all of the budgets, still we have it that the investment on infrastructure is less than one trillion, right? That's less than 5% 5, 5 of the entire budget. Which nation that is interested in development, developing economically power sector, infrastructure, which are very important for the market, would be investing less than 5% of an entire budget into infrastructure, despite the infrastructural gap. So I think uh, 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 looking at the budget in its entire process, I think a lot work more needs to be done before approval. It would seem that the Minister of Finance agrees with you with how unsustainable the uh, money for full subsidy is, 3.3 trillion. That's more than health and infrastructure put together and more than security and education if you're looking at them individually. We do not know whether there is the willpower or the political will to have this removed in the coming year. But let's take a look at some of the bu budget parameters and what you think about them. Oil price benchmark of 70 US dollars per barrel, daily oil production estimate at 1.69 million barrels, and an exchange rate of 435.57 naira per US dollar. What do you think? Well, I think it's a good one, uh, judging from, the, from all of the realities we find ourselves. Of course, uh, uh, the, the, the Ukrainian and, and um, Russian war 
is estimated right from the time that uh, it started. I was privileged to be like, you know, in a platform that has to do with intelligentsia that actually predicted that this war is going to last like about two years, regrettably, right? That's the prediction. And it has like untold impact because, of course, if you've not built, built buffers for your economies in terms of attaining some level of independence, building your enhancing your capacity, when you are so much dependent, when you have like a consuming economy, then whatever like a, 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 a kind of uh, tensions that comes up in a part of the globe has capacity to have an untold impact on your economy. And I think this is the part, the part that we need to begin to rethink. How do we move from a consuming nation to a producing one? How do we move from a dependent nation to, to a, a nation that is greatly like independent? And the interesting thing that I see that, you know, when we borrow as a nation, instead of copying the template of nations we cite as instances, or oh, this nation is owing. In those nations, when they borrow, they borrow to invest into capital projects that we enhance the economy. In our own case, we borrow to spend on our luxuries because you still see that the National Assembly is not in short supply of the regular cars they should get. The president is not in any way like you encourage citizens to apply you know, belt tightening measures, but your own belt is losing. We have a situation that even when you check like some of the allowances that come to the National Assembly, you will see things like hardship allowance. So the citizens, we do the hardship, we do the suffering, and the people's representatives are the ones that take, you know, that. And, and, and it's not good enough. I think uh, that needs to be reviewed. Indeed. Chikumbo Kenwa, Executive Director, Lead Network. Thank you for talking to us tonight. Thank now you.